Hey everyone, let's check out my new script and use some statistics to dynamically stretch our images. Welcome to SETI Astro. All right, let's go ahead and jump into my script. What it does is it's going to take a linear image and perform a nonlinear stretch on it based on the image statistics itself. Uh, so it's going to be very similar to an STF-like stretch but in a much more controlled way, a much more rigorous way. And I got a couple different objects that we'll walk through as examples. One which the nebulosity fills almost the entire frame, uh, the Eagle Nebula. One which uh, is just a isolated galaxy, uh, a colored image. And then uh, really, we're gonna really dig into what's underneath the hood, how it's doing it. So you understand uh, while you're utilizing the script what it's accomplishing for you. You can find all my scripts on my website, setiastro.com, under the Pix Insight Scripts. If you do already have the uh, URL for the repository in Pix Insight, it should update with my newest statistical stretch script. Or you can go ahead and download them uh, via zip files on the website as well. Once Pixel Insight is updated with my script, it'll be under Script Utilities Statistical Stretch. It's going to go ahead and pull up the dialog. I do have a couple little notes in there at the top just to get you going. A drop down to select the image you would like. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about what all these items do. It is set up such that once you have all your parameters in here established how you like, you can drag and make a new instance. And then with that process icon, you can drag it straight onto an image uh, to do the stretch. So you could save it right there on your desktop. Uh, you could apply directly from the little script dialog here onto all your images. We'll go ahead and kick it off just running the script on the Eagle Nebula here. I do have the GHS process in the background so we can see the histogram. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run it on an eagle, give it a target median of 0.25, so that'll be the median of the image. It'll uh, analytically calculate how to do that stretch and, and place it right at 0.25 for us. And we'll just click Execute. And there, it's done. There's a nonlinear stretch. Uh, and you can see the histogram here. How the, uh, how the peak shifted over to the right, and it's all uh, normalized to that zero and one. Now let's get underneath the hood and see what this script actually is doing for us. So the script performs the stretch in, in three parts. It, it adjusts the black point, it analytically solves for a median stretch, and then it does a, a final small normalization and then if you do want to apply the optional curves adjustment, we'll talk about that too. We're going to have to uh, stretch the histogram a little bit so we can see what's going on. And so here we go. Here's our current linear histogram. The first step it's going to do is adjust the black point for us. You see here on image statistics that the minimum here is a uh, 0.013. So everything below that is wasted space. So we're gonna adjust the black point. So the first thing the script does is it runs some pixel math to find the new black point. What it's gonna do is find the median first and go two sigma below that median. If that's actually less than the minimum, it's going to use the minimum. So there's just a little bit of logic there, but. Either way, what it's going to do, you're going to see that histogram is just going to move over to the left as it defines that new black point. So there, the histogram moved. So here's the before and after. Then once the histogram's moved, depending on what you place that target median at, it's going to, like I said, it could, it could actually solve for how to make that stretch, it's gonna take the median and put it wherever you want it in the script. So that's why I have uh, some of the instructions 
So in this case, the Eagle Nebula, the nebulosity fills the entire frame. You're gonna want a higher median value, right? It's, it's all signal. So you want that sitting up higher. So, you know, 0.25 is, is a decent one. So we can go ahead and drop that pixel mass on there now. It's gonna go ahead and, and run it. And we can get rid, rid of zooming in on there. There we go. Now it actually moved that entire histogram shifted over. So here's the before. You can see everything just smashed right up on the left and after. So it filled out the, the whole histogram. And then the final step it does, it just does a little a little tweak for normalization. It uh, has to reset the white point it is really what's happening. So it's gonna just go ahead and run that. And you may not even notice the histogram change at all there. Uh, so that's that's the main guts of what the, the script is doing. If you choose to have it iterate, it's just gonna go ahead and now rerun those three pieces of pixel math again for us since part of the normalization process does shift the median ever so slightly. So it's gonna go ahead and find the black point again. It's gonna redo that median stretch. And then the final normalization. It's just to ensure that there's statistical convergence if you want to be very particular on your on your stretch. The optional final curve stretch that you can adjust in the script will take your target median, place a point on curves transformation for that. It takes half your target median, places another point to anchor that background. So it's going to anchor everything less than the median and then what it does is it go, goes ahead and finds a quarter of the way up the curves line between the median and one, which is, which is the ceiling. And then depending on how much you adjust that slider, it's going to raise that point up that amount towards the top. So if you raise it up to the, uh, the point one mark, it's going to raise this dot up a tenth of the way towards the top and it's going to go ahead and give that an application at the very end which is going to help amplify the larger signal it, right it, you're, you're literally applying a curves transform to everything larger than the median value so this is going to be everything that is of significant signal within your image is going to get that final curves boost while keeping the background and everything less than the median constant. So let's go ahead again and look at it uh, just running. Looking under the hood we did have it at a, a 0.25. We did run it uh, twice so number of iterations that uh, two and we did raise it up uh, 0.1. So now you know what all those various items are doing. We can hit execute. You can see in the console, it's running through those different pieces of pixel math as it's determining the actual median stretch values, the normalization, and then applies that final sigma curve. So here, here is our actual nonlinear stretch. I, I think it did uh, a fabulous job of keeping nebulosity in the outer areas of the image and really brightening the, the larger structure. Now we'll go ahead and look at a starless noise exterminated image. And a lot of the time, this is where STF struggles a lot. So we'll go ahead and pull up the statistical stretch script again. And, and we'll go ahead and, and give it that final boost. Now I do have an STF applied here, so when I run it, it's going to get white immediately. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take the STF off when we're done executing. We'll tell it to execute on the Starless version here. And there it is. On the Starless version, there's no overstretching uh, that STF can sometimes do on these, these images. And the Eagle's tough to just be due to the the dynamic range in the core. Uh, so if you do have a high dynamic range item like this, 
I would recommend HDR multi-scale transformation, especially with nebula season coming, coming up, that you're gonna be able to uh, bring down some of those, those brighter structures so I, I thought I'd, it would just be nice to, to run it here to show everybody. And there you go. All right, for this one, we have an isolated galaxy. This is M83, the Southern Pinwheel. So we'll turn off STF. We'll go ahead and pull up our statistical stretch. And again, now the background, the median value is just the background in the sky, right? There's no nebulosity filling out the whole thing. So you may want a, you know, a lower target value for that. We can, I put 0.1 in there for a good starting point. You may want 0.12. Uh, and yeah, let's go, let's go ahead and, and boost. We want that galaxy to be boosted, right? So this is uh, our M83 image and we'll go ahead and click execute. And there we go. Here's a, our nonlinear stretch. The sky background still fairly uh, dark and our galaxy popped right on out. And you can go ahead and do one undo to show what that curves actually does. Here's before that final curves was applied and after. It really targets those items that are only above the, the median. Now let's do a very challenging stretch this is the m83 image again starless with noise exterminator done and if you run stf on it stf goes crazy i think everybody's experienced this when you're processing your image where stf really just overstretches it so we'll put it back to the the initial stf and we'll go ahead and run our statistical stretch on it now So again, we'll put the, the 0.12. We wanted that final sigma stretch in there. And this is the M83 with the starless and noise exterminator. Go ahead and click execute. And done. No overstretching. The background's still nice and dark. And our galaxy is, is nicely stretched non-linearly. Non there's no overblown core. Uh, it goes right up into the 0.9s and keeps it keeps it stable. Uh, so that was a much more difficult stretch for STF to even attempt, and it's handled very easily with uh, my statistical stretch model. We have a color attempt now. The this is stars removed noise exterminated again stf gives wacky results if you try applying stf to it so we'll go ahead and run the script now color images have to be handled differently since you can't stretch each channel separately it has to know what the other channels are doing when it's stretching so it is more involved uh, and you'll see the console doing a lot more a lot more math in order to ensure that we have a, a good statistical stretch at the end and we'll go, go ahead and apply that curves boost too because we want to see that galaxy pop and we'll just uh, tell it to execute and it's and it's done so in this particular one we didn't overstretch the background again there's our galaxies even the little satellite galaxies are in there and if you turn off the extra curves boost at the end, you could see the, the difference it makes in there. And it just is such a great initial linear to non-linear stretch to, to get you kind of right to where you need. And you could see that the colors are all the same, right? It didn't put a weird cast in there like some of the other stretching does. Well, I hope you guys get some good use out of my new statistical stretch linear to non-linear script. If you have any questions or comments or parameters you like utilizing with it, please leave a comment below. 
as always, like and subscribe.